it's been 12 months since my wing foiling journey began, so I'm obviously an expert. <laughs> okay, so I'm not quite an expert. Why? Why, Ben, are you not an expert? Well, I'll be honest, I haven't actually been on the wing that much. Um, the winter came here in Portugal, we had some great wave sailing and we've had a lot of wind. So I've literally been windsurfing. This is a windsurfing channel, you know I'm a die-hard windsurfer. But, but, the summer has just kicked off, the buzz on the beach is up and wing foiling is back on the agenda. Why did I stop wing foiling? Well, I have to say, the short answer is I grew out of my board. Yeah, I had this very board here, 125 litres, 6'6", six, six, Naskwell. It was an absolute beauty to learn on. You know, wide, stable, um, super happy with that. But as you know by watching the videos, by the third day I was already jumping and it was already feeling too big. Um, I then tried to get hold of a smaller one. I couldn't get a straight answer of what I needed. I rung a few people, everyone had sold out. And then the winter came and like I said, I started wave sailing. So it got forgotten. And then this year kicked off. Picked up a new board, yes. So this is my new baby. This is what's the new motivation. It's a 55F1. I actually don't know the model. I probably should do. It says rocket in the middle. I think it's a F. It's a 55 rocket. Um, and this is 85 liters. So for you guys at home who don't know, I'm about 78, 80 at the moment. And this is why I'm making this video, because since I've been riding this uh, in the last weeks or so, I have kind of thought, you know what, Ben? I reckon you could have learned to wing fall on this board. And I know a few of you at home going, oh my God, Ben, don't tell them all to get too small a board. Now, I say this with caution, so don't just take my word for it, but I'm just gonna tell you what I have experienced. Since I've been standing on this board in no wind, hardly at all, with a little bit of power in the wing, it's so stable. It's only like seven liters bigger than me, but you've got to remember it's quite wide. And I genuinely think, rightly or wrongly, that I could have learned on this board. Would it have took me a bit longer? Maybe. But I then wouldn't have had to upgrade the board. So I'm making this video for you guys at home who are looking into wing foil now going, what board do I get? There's so much choice. What foil do I get? Do, you know, what size? I think the active windsurfers, the good wave sailors, um, the board sport enthusiasts could go relatively close to their body weight. Now, don't go too close. Like I say, this is about seven litres bigger than me. I feel I could have done it. I don't know, because I learned on that big beast. So I don't know. I would suggest having a go, but just keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to talk through a few other things. Um, there's no foot straps on this board. I have to say that, me personally, um, I got a good deal on this board thanks to the guys at F1, but I will say, when you put some foot strap plugs on this, there are no foot strap plugs. So it is actually, we're gonna come onto this when I do the action video. It's actually changed my style of wing foiling, which I think has been a good thing, but I still, want to put some foot straps on it now. I'm seeing Galito Estrado and the rest of the boys, you know, Balls Muller, doing all these crazy stuff and I want to have a little bit of a go and I can't without foot straps. So apart from that, very good. Um, and then we go on to handles. Handle on the bottom. When you're buying a new board, do not buy one without a handle on the bottom. I'm speaking this just from my own personal experience. This is a game changer. When you're walking to the water, you lack those awkward things that you watched in my first videos just by having the handle on the bottom. Also, I think most wing boards like this now, but the double US box, much easier. You can move, obviously, the foil. It's solid, it's easy to get in and out. I'm a big fan of this for wing foiling. Um, I'm just gonna go through the size of this foil. This is a 1500. 
I actually don't know the model. If I do see it, I'll put it in the bottom. But this has just been a really good combo for me. And as I said before, I think I could have learnt on this. Um, I've also, they sent me a new wing to try as well, which is a good job. This is a 4.2, you know, the span of it. It's the new Strike, I think it is. Um, and this has been the perfect size for here in Portugal. We get, you know, on the lighter wind days between 10, 12, 14, 16, that kind of range. And this combo has just been a go too. I just rig it up, go. And even in the light winds, I can just pump it onto the, onto the, onto the foil. I was gonna say onto the plane, but onto the foil. So there you go, just a, a little video just to show you my equipment upgrades, because we are gonna be going and showing you some of the things I've learned in wing foiling, some of the little tips that I've kind of taught myself, and some things that I think you need to practice to excel in this discipline to have more fun. So let me know in the comments below, do you agree with me? Could you have learnt on a smaller board? Are you happy you got the big board? Any comments will be super useful for everyone else getting into wing foiling. It is a minefield out there. You've got shops telling you one thing, riders telling you other. Uh, mine is just one experience and I'd love to hear yours. Uh, so there we go, stay tuned to the channel. We're gonna be doing a bit of wing foiling. Uh, like I said, um, there's a few things that I have learned which I think could be super useful.